Good morning, guys. It is uh, Tuesday night for us, Wednesday morning for you guys. You guys know what that means. That means Bible study tonight, every Wednesday night. We have Bible study at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. <clears throat> California time. And um, is this crooked? I don't know. Uh, anyways, um, every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have a Bible study at House of Rest Church. It's the only time to really be interactive with us because Sundays I can't be interactive because I'm actually at the front of the church preaching. Um, these devotionals are pre-recorded. That way they can be released at 3 in the morning for our East Coast um, family to be able to watch it when they wake up at 6. And um, so the best time to be interactive with us when we're live is Wednesday night. So uh, <clears throat> make sure you um, join us, guys. We it, we have a great time. Not sure what we're going to study yet. I have to think about it. But whatever it is, it's going to be good. I know that. Uh, we did a study on Jos King Jos Josiah. We took, I think, three weeks to do that one. And, um, you know, as you know, in our Sunday services... Man, the past seven weeks, we have gone through a sermon series of the seven letters to the churches. That was a lot of fun, interesting, informative, and uh, um, edifying. I pray it was edifying for everybody that was able to attend and uh, or watch, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, once again, you know, we've been uh, uh, just pushing forward with Lake Tahoe kind of helping them establish, and uh, we were there again Monday, uh, well, Sunday, for their 6 o'clock Sunday service. Make sure you um, uh, subscribe to their channel. Uh, also, uh, Spring Texas, they have their YouTube channel up. Uh, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen right here. I'm not sure at the top of my head what the channel name is, but I'll put it on the screen on editing. Um, but other than that... Um, you know, same thing. We head back Monday. It gets tiring. It gets late. So, you know, there's no way to do a devotional. And um, I apologize for that. I, 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 things will get back to normal, trust me. And um, it'll be great with five devotionals a week. That's what we want to do. That's the goal. That's still the goal, you know. Um, so anyways, uh, we came back into into uh from tahoe and as soon as we hit lodi which is right here the next town before hitting stockton it was pouring uh monday i mean bad like it sounded like hail i don't know it was just really loud in the car i didn't see ice but it was just loud and maybe it was a, a few seconds of hail i, I don't know it was just <clears throat> we haven't had a rain like that and i don't know how long it felt awkward you know that's how how long it's been since we've really had a good rain, you know? So, um, but I did want to dive into some scripture, guys. And um, I know it's been a while. So, like I said, I really want to give you a good, solid teaching and, and word today. You know, so um, I'm going to go ahead and um, and say, let's go to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, and um, let's see, chapter 13, and um, let's start at verse 7. Hebrews 13, verse 7. You know, today, um, and this goes along with what we're going to read. Oh, actually, let's read it first, and then I'll talk about what happened today. Verse 7 says, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's verse 8. Let's keep going, verse 9. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. For it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat. So, 
this this part, really uh, the beginning verse, where it says, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you. It's not talking about, see, sometimes in English translation, when they translate the original Hebrew or Greek, it, it loses translation. And those of you that speak two languages, I know many of you speak Spanish and English, you know that sometimes there are certain things that don't translate well. You know, some things in English sound very harsh if you literally translate it into Spanish or vice versa. There's some things in Spanish that can be very harsh if you translate it like um, literally in English. So obviously when we get the Bible sometimes, so when it says right here, remember those who rule over you, well, we think of somebody ruling over me like somebody's a dictator or a controlling person or, or uh, you know, somebody that, that has a bully or something, you know. But that's, that's not what it means. Um, it, it's talking about somebody that has guided you, somebody that has led you, somebody that has watched over you. So it says, remember those who rule over you. Remember those that have led you remember those that have taught you remember them don't forget about them don't don't learn from somebody and then just leave them high and dry it says remember those who rule over you who have spoken the word of god to you so even that second sentence we understand and we know that it's talking about remembering somebody that spoke the word of god over you don't forget them don't leave them high and dry you know and um um, today, uh, as you know, Sharon works Tuesdays and Wednesdays, you know, so I'm in Modesto the whole day, uh, because I take her and then, um, I get things done, you know, uh, whether it's the, you know, uh, with book publishing or graphics or whatever it is I got to do, I got the laptop and then I got the computer in the media center. Uh, there's always something for me to do. So it's not like I'm just sitting there doing nothing. And uh, so I take Sharon to work and I go to the church. That's why a lot of the times you see a lot of the interviews I do or Zooms or whatever with me in the in the church lobby because I'm um, just getting things done. Anyways, um, Brother Johnny and Diana, they have their phone booth. It's literally two minutes away, if that you know, maybe less, a minute and a half away, um, because there's no there's no um, stoplight. There's just, I believe, two stop signs. Uh, they're two stop signs away. And um, I got hungry, so I was, I was doing some work, and um, and I got hungry, so I went down to the taco trucks, which is I had to pass Johnny and Diana. So I said, oh, you know what? I'm gonna get my burrito, and then I'm gonna go back and uh, and see how they're doing, you know. And um, so I pulled in, started eating my burrito, chopping it up with Brother Johnny, you know, and, and he was just um, sharing, he was just sharing some things and, you know, just uh, seeing how he's doing, how I'm doing, and then we're just talking about some stuff. And I, I know, man, who, who yawns on YouTube channels, right? Me. I do. I know. It's weird. It's probably the worst thing you can do it doesn't help get subscribers it doesn't help get reoccurring people to come back they're just like man this guy can't even stay awake in his own video why should i spend the time to watch it but hey man i'm i'm not gonna edit stuff uh, you know and um this is just me this is this is me and i'm tired you know but he started sharing with me and and he goes you know this happened in this situation and I did exactly what I see you do, or and then I went here and I said this exactly the way you say it, and and you know it's a trip. It's a trip to hear, you know, a fellow brother in the way he ministers, in the way he prays for others, in the way he he does it according to what he has seen me do, and. Um, that really blesses me, you know what I mean? That that lets me know, like, okay, I'm doing something right. You know, uh, I'm, I'm leading these men in the right direction, you know? Um, 
And so he was just sharing, like, yeah, you know, I had to pray for these people. These people came up because he was ministering somewhere with this, a friend of his. And um, he was, man, I started praying for them because they were sick or they were in pain. He was in, I do like you do. He was in, man, they started getting healed. You know, and, and it just made me think of that. Remember those who rule over you who have spoken the word of God to you. Whose faith follow considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. So in other words, remember the person that taught you the word of God. Because when you do that, you don't easily get led astray with, what does it say? With various and strange doctrines. You know, I, I heard the same thing with Brother Alex in, in Lake Tahoe, uh, the brother that's leading there, um, him and Veronica, and, and he'll say things like, uh, even during a sermon or before the sermon or after the sermon, uh, we baptize somebody, and, and he's just like a sponge. He's soaking this stuff up, you know, and, and um, one of my daughters went with us to Lake Tahoe, and uh, man, I had such a great time spending time with her because uh, she's the one that's a... a an RN. She works at a hospital. She's a nurse, and uh, she is busy, man. She does 10, 12-hour shifts, I think, and so her day's off or, or not exactly on weekends, and anyways, she was able to go to Lake Tahoe with us. I said, hey, we have an Airbnb already there. Just come. I'll give you your own bedroom, you know, because it was like a four-bedroom house, and, uh, and she went, man. I got so blessed, you know, but I was sharing with her we were laughing, right, because um, uh, Brother Alex, the leader of Lake Tahoe, um, you know, he's learning. This is barely his, what, third third time? Third time, you no know, preaching at House of Rest Lake Tahoe. So at the end, um, I kind of help him, you know, with the altar call and stuff. And, and we were joking with, I was joking with my daughter because I told her, I said, do you ever hear yourself at the hospital. Like, she works at, at a big hospital, you know, and it's just weird because I, I, all I see is my little girl, you know what I mean? And and I said, and, and do you ever hear yourself with a patient or with a doctor or whatever, and you're like, do you think to yourself, oh, my gosh, I sound like a nurse? And she started laughing. But she goes, yeah, all the time. She goes, I'll hear myself, and I'll be like, I said, oh, my gosh, I sound like a nurse, you know? And I said, you know what, want to hear something funny? I said, Sometimes I hear myself and I say, man, I sound like a preacher or I sound like a pastor. And she started laughing. She goes, well, you are a pastor. I said, yeah, I know. But sometimes um, I'll say things and, and like I was doing uh, the altar call at the end of the service. And uh, I was I didn't even know I was going to come up at the end. And, um, and at the end of Alex's sermon, I, I noticed... You know, the transition, he's still learning how to transition into the altar call. And I, I just kind of stepped in. And I think I said something about, in the same way a police chief talks to his officers before they go out into the streets. And I compared it to church. And uh, and I was telling my daughter, I said, when I was saying all that, I was like hearing myself and thinking to myself, you sound like a pastor. You know, and it's just weird, you know, but, you know, the, the to be able to share, you know, not only with uh, Lake Tahoe, not only with Brother Johnny, also Brother Anthony in Spring, Texas, um, Brother Tony in Phoenix, many of the other brothers at House of Rest, you know, you got, you got Brother Anthony, um, just a lot of brothers, you know, a lot of you guys, a lot of you. You know, um, I don't want to say a bunch of names and then I'll forget a name. And But, you know, I just like that scripture, you know, where it says don't forget. You know, don't forget who you learn from. And and I take that as, that's Bible, man. That's Bible. When somebody really pours into you and somebody uh, helps you walk this walk in Christ, and um, don't forget about them, you know. And, and, uh, it's it's uh, it's a blessing to be in the position because even when I was in um, when I was in 
Terminal Island. There was a brother. <sighs> so sorry. I've been yawning more than any time. I, I really didn't get much sleep last night. I think maybe four hours. And it's not even that late right now. So that's why I'm trying to do this devotional so I can actually get to sleep early. Because she has to go to work early again in the morning. And I want to be able to do a bike ride and take my bike. And, but I need proper sleep. So I think it's barely like 9.30. So I'm going to do this, render it, and I'm going to go to bed. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, what was I saying, man? I already forgot what I was talking about. Yeah, I really make this channel interesting, huh? <laughs> um, anyways, guys, I apologize. I just, uh, I think I already made my point. As we don't forget, you know, oh yeah, Terminal Island. Uh, there was a brother named Brother Mario. And, and, you know, coming out of solitary, I didn't get to Terminal Island I, I did a year in solitary before I hit the yard in Terminal Island. So you got to understand that I know Terminal Island is a prison, and you would think this is weird that I say this, right? But it was my first first day having freedom. You know, it felt like freedom because I had been in a little tiny cell. It's like locking yourself in a bathroom for an entire year. And all of a sudden, I'm taken to this facility and there's a chapel and a yard and basketball courts and a running track and a weight pile and classrooms and a chow hall, you know, uh, commissary. It just, it was, it was overload for me to go from a little tiny, you know, cell living. Um, and even before that, even before I spent a year in the hole, I spent a whole year in another cell with a, in a pod. So I'd been living in a cell for two years, one of those years in solitary, and all of a sudden, boom, I'm walking the yard. It was just crazy, you know. Uh, I was rejoicing. And uh, anyway, this brother Mario, man, he he took me under his wing. I was a brand new Christian. You got to remember, I didn't have fellowship with anybody hardly in county. And all of a sudden, I, I had this group of, of brothers that, that uh, embraced me. And brother Mario, who's the leader, man, he really poured into me and... and not even poured into me scripture, but spent time, you know. All right, Mel, be careful. You know, and um, and uh, I was just able to be there with him, and 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 it wasn't even the pouring of scripture, to be honest with you. It was his pastoral position, his way of being a shepherd. It was his way of embracing. That's what I got from him. I had never witnessed that before myself. I'd never had somebody care so much, you know. Um, and then within a few months, they took him in the middle of the night, him and about a few other hundred inmates. No warning or nothing. They're like, hey, roll it up. And they sent them all over the place to other prisons. So all of a sudden... This mentor, this person that I considered a brother and a pastor, even though he was a fellow inmate, and all of a sudden, you know, after waiting a whole year in solitary, waiting to get out, waiting to have fellowship, and all of a sudden he gets taken, and uh, man, it broke me, man. It broke all of us, the whole group. He, I think he was, they had been with him for a couple of years, you know, but I was only with him for about three months, maybe, maybe four. And it was crazy because in the, in the, in the short time of those four months, after he left, all those brothers needed to find a new person that would lead the group. And they chose me, which blew me away. At first I refused. I'm like, I'm the new guy here. I'm the new guy here. And they're just like, in, individually, all of them said they prayed and the Lord told them me. So I accepted, you know, and, and I led these men to the best of my ability, trying to be like Mario. I try to be like, because I, I remember, like the scripture said, remember the one that poured into you. And, and, you know, I led that group there for my remaining time there in Terminal Island. Um, you know, which which was almost two years, I think. I don't know. I had to really do the math. It was less than two years for sure. Because I had two years in county. But my whole sentence was six years. So I did two 
two years in county jail, you know, one of those in the hole. I think roughly two years there and then the last two in camp, something like that. So it came out to six years. Well, I, actually, I did five years, 11 and a half months. So I, just easier to say six years. Um, but anyways, um, I was able to be um, a leader there and I poured into a group of men. And then when I left, I prayed somebody else in to lead the group. And then I went to um, Atwater and to prison camp. And um, there was no, there was no um, group. There was a couple Christians, nobody fellowship, nobody had a structure. And um, we started a structure. And once again, by default, I, I was the one that led the men there. And the group grew to over a dozen men. You know, and um, again, I found myself pouring into them, and um, many of them are now out, they're free, and they're still serving God. Some of them, I lost track of them, but the core of them, Johnny Alcala is still serving the Lord, Edwin uh, Madera is still serving the Lord, you know, um, John from Las Vegas is far as I know, last I spoke to him, still serving the Lord, you know, and some of these other guys, you know. So anyways, um, never forget who poured into you. Appreciate them, you know, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to let you guys go. God bless you. Please join us for um, Bible study tonight at 7 o'clock, every single Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. House of Rest has Bible study Continue to pray for our other churches, for the Phoenix House of Rest, for Spring, Texas House of Rest, and for Lake Tahoe House of Rest, you know, and um, we have our uh, our uh, conference coming up in Oceanside, California, and um, if, if you are near that area, we would love to meet up with you. That would be awesome. Uh, we're going to leave October 2nd, right after Sunday service, and we're going to be in Oceanside October 2nd, the evening the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, and then we're leaving on the 6th. Some of the some of the people are leaving on the 5th, but we are going to be there until the 6th, which is a Thursday. So uh, if you are in the Oceanside area, we want to meet with you. We want to fellowship with you. Let's break bread. Let's go eat some. Uh, it's a little spot right there that I like, fish, uh, fish and chips. So anyways, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much, and see you tomorrow.